What do you say to your 18-year-old daughter when the doctor says she has cancer? How would you respond? Please stay tuned. <laughs> Hi, my name is Father Mike Manning. God bless you. Thank you very much for tuning into the program. We have got a very, very powerful program for you today. I don't want you to miss any word of it. What, did, what does it mean to be able to struggle with cancer uh, as a person who hears that from the doctor? But then the other side is, what do you say if you're a husband, you're a wife, you're a parent of a person who has cancer? How do we deal with that? Uh, we got a special guest for us today who's going to move us through some painful, but at the same time, victorious experiences. Paul, well, thanks thank you much. very much for coming I all the way from Florida. Much. All the way. It's great to have you here and to be on the program. Thanks for you and Nancy to be here, your wife. Um, you've, you've written a book, uh, and as you said, it's covering a kind of a collaborative book because it actually began um, working with your daughter as this was written. Are you with me on this? Yes. Like this. Could you tell us a little bit about, about, um, about your daughter, Rebecca, please? Well, Rebecca was, uh, you know, if you, if you would ask me, she is a very spiritual person. I would say she loves church, loves everything about, mm -hmm. you know, that. Um, but she was a happy person and 18, getting ready for college, her dream for such a long time. And, and quite intelligent. I mean, this oh. is... She, she did well in school. Yeah, she was a straight-A student. Oh, and so every yeah. parent wants to say that, but you know, she really yes, was. She, yes, yes. And, and she just loved the pureness of education and mm. the pureness of knowledge. And so um, that inspired her for college. And, um, and so, yeah, the day before um, we found out we were moving her into college, we found out um, she had cancer. Wow. You know, it came out of nowhere. She, she was not sick. She was not. She was our you know, perfectly healthy athlete in um, eighth grade. And um, it was just a rare cancer that um, you could not have been prepared for. This all of a sudden happened, are you saying the day before she was going to college? Yeah, no, my wife was just taking her for routine checkups to oh, get her ready to go away for six month semester. And they noticed something in one of the routine and they did a pathology report. And they said, you know, don't worry about it, it'll be nothing. Um, but of course, uh, and I was traveling. But on the way home um, in the car, uh, Rebecca and I, we really didn't speak because I, I don't think there were any words and we, we really weren't comprehending what that, what that actually meant. Um, she had been um, at school over the summer uh, for what they call summer B at the University of Florida. And she just loved everything about school and she just wanted to be in school. She loved school, she loved to learn. And now in a split second, we knew that our lives had completely changed. And I would say that, so our initial reaction was disbelief. Uh, this couldn't be happening. Maybe we needed another opinion. You get the word, you get the word that Rebecca has cancer. Uh, can you share with us a little bit about what was going on in your head and in your heart at the time? Um, I, I don't know that I even, heard all the words that my, my wife told me and, and her, the, the sound of her voice was not a sound they've actually heard from her. It was just um, such a surreal moment and but I heard cancer, I heard Rebecca and I heard come home and um, I just immediately jumped on a plane and the thoughts that run through your mind, you know, um, being on the plane was, was very difficult because I couldn't contact them and you know all I wanted to do is get home and hug Rebecca. Yes. And, um, and then I started replaying the whole week of her happiness and just her joy of getting ready for college. And, um, and then this came into her life. Tell me a little bit about the progress of the, the struggle with cancer. She, she goes on to college though, doesn't she? Yeah, she, <clears throat> she made a decision um, that night. You know, we went and saw a family doctor and we of course thought she, we should just 
keep her in her bedroom and Precisely. you know keep her safe and um, and she decided that night after talking to one of her friends uh, Kirby who was going away to college with her that she was going to college and you know the treatment program was going to start she understood that but she was going to go to college and we took her to college now for her she was she was perfectly content she had tremendous friends uh, they you know Rebecca was 18 her friends were 18 you know at that age I was amazed at the um, spirituality that each and every one of them had and even though they each individually were were different uh, they they rallied around her um, they they did whatever they were asked to do for her but one thing that they did do that um, Rebecca loved was they didn't focus on her cancer and they didn't focus on her as a sick person and that's exactly what she wanted and she was dating a boy who was very very special to her and he gave her a tremendous gift by just getting together having fun and not focusing on the cancer and, and I think you know Father Mike that's how she then lived you know that the next 19 months was the exact same attitude of you know she cherished and loved every day how many surgeries did she have she had five major surgeries five in major surgeries months. hello in in the course of 19 months yes wow and again i we, we you could only characterize that as hell she it just um, she just went through them and um, the doctors were great they were god sent um, they tried everything you know success rate in cancers are going up every day um, doctors are doing great her particular cancer was a very aggressive cancer um, and they did try and the five surgeries tell you that because that's not that normal um, ten different chemotherapy drugs were attempted how many ten ten different chemotherapy drugs all with each a wonderful hideous side effect is my word and yes she was intelligent and yes I'm sure she looked up her diagnosis on the internet which was not advised Rhabdomyosarcoma is a very rare cancer. Her particular cancer, there's only 60 known documented cases. That's why the book is called Rare, because it's like a needle in a haystack to even get this cancer. But she chose to remain to be the person God created her to be. And one of the messages I like to, <laughs> I have a lot of messages, but the one that really I'd like to, people to know is, is, is that during difficult times, you know, trust and fully trust. And then God equips you. And not, Rebecca was a normal teenager and did all the normal teenage things. And, but, but to trust, to truly trust God was amazing. She'd be so sick she couldn't get out of bed. And then 10 minutes later, she'd be dressed, and, and then we'd be going, where are you going? And she'd be going, I'm going out. I feel good enough. I'm going out. Wow. Um, and, you know, one particular day, she was, this was during radiation, which, again, was high-dose radiation, which was not a normal process. Um, we were supposed to go to lunch after I took her to one of her sessions, and she was so sick she couldn't go. And uh, my reaction was sadness, you know, and she goes, Dad, what's the matter? And I was like, well, back ever since she started treatment, it's just one thing after the next. We can't even do something simple like go to lunch together. But she just looked at me, Father, and said, Dad, do you realize how much life I've lived since we found out I had cancer? Wow. How much life we've lived since I got cancer. Wow. Could you tell us a little bit about those, those last moments? I know that's a very tender and painful thing, but um, when it was coming to the end after 19 months, she's in hospice. Could you share with us a little bit about what went on with her and well you've shared that but what was going on with you as you have to let go of someone you love with such a precious life well you know one of the, the hospice uh, nurse who, who wrote a reflection talked about those days and said to the hospice minister there's no sadness in this house there's only joy there's mm -hmm. only happiness and she says I feel angels around Rebecca it, it's hard to explain that to anyone about those last four days because we all understood the reality of those four days mm -hmm. we all understood how sick she was but on Tuesday two days before she passed away she said dad I want to go to the pool and literally we all went to the pool with wait a minute now wait, now wait you're saying two days before she passes yes she wants to go to the pool 
And, and she did. Wow. And she sat in the water, and she sat and enjoyed Florida sun, and she sat. Um, and I, everyone that was there, many of her friends in that, how inspiring of a day it was. And there was uh, one of her close friends wrote a news article about that day, that moment. You know, um, the day she passed away, I don't know why, but I asked her, you know, Beck, what's your favorite music um, in church? And she didn't understand my question, nor did I, actually. <laughs> and, um, and then finally she said, here I am, Lord. And so I've, I've reflected on that throughout my life now. Of, you know, if you say, how's my life today? Here I am, Lord. Um, I'm her father. Of course I, I wanted her. Of course I miss her. Of course. But I'm happy where she is. I'm happy for her. She understood what that, that end game was. And she, she was happy about that. She didn't want to die. I don't want anyone to have the impression no, she wanted that she to wanted die. That. But she also was not in any way afraid of Jesus' plan for her. And a, and a sense of acceptance. Very much so. I want to come back. Uh, we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back in just a moment. But I want to know uh, a little bit more about how you are dealing with this, uh, because we all know what it is to lose someone that we love. Uh, and what has, what has Becca, I, I, like, I like the name Becca, what, what is what has she taught you in terms of how we deal with the loss of someone we love very much? Uh, let's talk about that. Stay tuned, please. I want you to come right back. I am very excited to tell you that I have written a book, and I want you to be able to read it. It's a book that's called 15 Faces of God. It's a quest to know God, through the parables of Jesus. I've, I've labored with this book for a long time, and it's been a real labor of love because I feel that through this insight into the parables, we are opening up a wonderful insight into God. Now, I believe that Jesus was continually giving parables. They were ways of his getting out to many people, not just the people that went to synagogue and religious people. But parables were allowing him to get to the vast audience. And I couple that with the reality of how deeply Jesus loved his Father. We read in the Gospel of John time and again, he's, oh, I come to do the Father's will. And when they asked him how to pray, it wasn't, oh, pray the name of Jesus. No, it, my Father. And what I've done is I've taken 15 of these marvelous parables some maybe those that you hadn't heard too much about. And I allow us to open up the door of an understanding of who just God is. Some of the, some of the insights into God, searching, humble, giving, celebrating, loving, authentic, generous, trusting, and even optimistic. Please, for your, for your gift and donation to the ministry of $20 or more, I would love to send you this book. And not only are the lessons there, but there's a chance for you to have deep discussions because of questions that I presented. Remember, 15 Faces of God. Paul, we're talking about the beautiful person, Becca, who uh, at 18 gets the word that she has cancer. And then over a struggle of 19 months, um, the family is turned upside down and inside out with regard to this, the love that you have for her and the struggle with letting go and seeing if there might even be hope there. Um, one of the problems that I've experienced as a priest dealing with people who run into difficult problems like the, the death of someone they love is that although there's a certain coming together of the husband and wife, it can be a time when a, a great pain and even a possibility of separation seems to happen between a husband and a wife. How did, how did you and Nancy deal with this, uh, the struggle of this pain of the loss of this precious, this precious jewel in your life? Well, I think part of it is Rebecca stayed with us long enough to teach us 
some of those final lessons about what we needed to understand mm -hmm. when she was leaving. And in those lessons, you know, so if you use the word guilt and you say, did I have guilt? Um, no, uh, I, she wouldn't have had me have that. She didn't want she, that to happen. You know, yeah. so she, she understood the things that, um, and so no, as I look back at her, and, and me and Nance talk, you know, a lot about, um, we have no, there's no part of us that is a married couple, as, as a husband and wife, that have guilt for this. Um, the doctors were wonderful. They were, they really were God sent. So they, were, they didn't leave any stone unturned in trying to treat her cancer. And so there's no regrets. Mm -hmm. There's no like, oh, well, we should have tried yes, another yes, medicine. Yes. So, but we, we also talk about happiness amongst ourselves. So me and Nance talk about happiness and joy every day. And we know that this is our day today to experience this earthly happiness and joy. Right. Um, actually, um, we, I would say that Paul and I became um, closer as a couple. Um, we knew that we had to be strong. We knew that we had to do whatever uh, was necessary, whatever the doctors said. Um, but we also knew that we needed to trust in God um, because we knew that the will for Rebecca um, regardless which doctor we chose, regardless which treatment she had, it would be in God's hands. And so we, we use that strength. When trauma comes into our life, when tragedy comes into our life, there's a natural inclination to say, where was God? Uh, why isn't he present? Why isn't he swooping down and solving the problem? There can be an image of distance from God and alienation from God when something like this happens. How do you react to a person who would say, huh, don't talk to me about God? No. How would you react to that? Well, you, your initial reaction is, am I being punished? Is Rebecca being ah. punished? You know, that, that is your, your initial reaction. Um, but when we, when we talked about the journey we were on and we talked about you know, our faith, um, we went to church that Sunday. And I think a after church that The Sunday, Sunday that she passed? No, the Sunday that we found out. That we found out, just gotcha. Just a few days okay, later. Gotcha. Um, and, you know, that started the healing process of, you know, God is with us on this journey. We don't know where the journey's going. And we, we, we started to understand there's going to be hardships in it. Um, but we always knew that Jesus was going to be with us on the journey. And you're able to sustain that now, um, even after she's passed. Your faith in the Lord, has your faith in the Lord, uh, has it increased? Has it grown? Has it... Has it changed? Well, I think part of our Christianity is intense pain comes sometimes with Christianity and comes with our feeling. Um, so is there, there a sense of pain with, with loss? Absolutely. But that sense of pain has brought me so much closer to, to my faith and, and so much closer. In what to way? Me. In what way? Well, you, you, you now reflect and you know how, how much beauty is in life, you know, and, and the tenderness of life. And, how short life can be at times. Um, and, and I think, you know, one of the things me and Beck talked about was even Jesus the night before. You know, there was a pause moment, I call it a pause moment, where Jesus said, you know, if this is possible, take this cup from me. Yes. But then the Holy Spirit and, and the will of the Father. And Rebecca understood and I understand that the Father's will isn't our will. And, and I, I don't expect the Father to reconcile the difference me being a father who, who loves his children with everything, and the fact that nothing bad happened to Rebecca. She, she's exactly where I would want her to be. And part of me went with her. You know, we always say with loss that part of us goes with them. I thought that was a phrase or a saying. It's not a phrase or a saying. Part of my heart, part of my essence, part of my soul went with Rebecca. But if I had to pick a person to take it first to heaven, and hold on to it for me so that when that reunion does come, because I know the reunion is coming and Jesus is going to reunite us and I'll be whole again because I don't feel always whole on this earth. Yeah. What a blessed moment that is. That's our faith. And that she understood that. That's why we cried at the end a lot of different times. You know, Father, she never cried once in the last four days. Really? Even though she had many opportunities because we were crying, she understood this wasn't goodbye. We're not saying goodbye here. 
And, and that was an important message that I feel strong about that, that today. I didn't say goodbye to Rebecca. I will see Rebecca. And as a Catholic, I believe that she's alive right now. She's in the presence of the Lord Jesus and probably knocking on his door and then interceding for you and reaching out for, for you and Nancy and, 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 and your son to let them know that you are cared and you love for and so the inspiration, you know, I, th I believe that life goes on caring for you even now. Does well, that make sense? Yeah, she asked me about paradise. A couple days before she passed away, we, we, read, we read from the Bible about St. Paul and we also read, you know, about the two criminals. And, you know, we, I, we both understood the power of the criminal saying, I, I know I'm a sinner. I know I don't deserve, I'm getting what I deserve. But, you know, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And, and me and Beck talked two days before she passed. You know, Beck, he could have answered that many ways or not answered that statement from the criminal. But he chose to give us a message. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Yeah, right now. <laughs> and then she, she asked me about paradise. And she said, what did St. Paul see? And I said, well, obviously it affected him to a point where everything else in his life didn't matter. Precisely, everything. Oh, pain, it was suffering, and so I, I equate that. St. Paul went through much pain. She gave me a book about St. Paul for Christmas and wrote me an inspiration in the book. But the amazing thing was that even after she was diagnosed with cancer, her joy remained. And I questioned that a lot and said, that's not normal. How, how did she do that? I, I marveled at that. And then I was thinking about it. And it was her trust, it was her trust in God that she was able to remain joyful. And that is one of the messages of the book, is that no matter what circumstances maybe you're going through in your own personal life, if you completely surrender yourself to God and trust in Him, then He gives you everything you need to get through your circumstances. And that's what she did. That very last day I prayed that, I mean, up until the very last breath, I, I, we never gave up the hope. But what is interesting is that very last day I had prayed differently because of the amount of pain that she was in, the fact that um, medically there was nothing more that they were gonna offer her. I did pray differently. Um, I used to bless her uh, on the forehead with water from Lourdes, but that particular day I poured the water on her legs because she was in such pain. And I did pray differently. And it's not that I felt like um, God had to ask my permission <laughs> to take Rebecca because he didn't. But what he, he did give me is he gave me um, the gift to come to the realization on my own that it was time and that I did not want her to continue um, to suffer because she did suffer. Um, but she's a, the book is so important she, because it's, it's inspirational, especially to teenagers and young adults, that there's always hope, there's always faith, and like St. Paul said, there's always Always love. What I'm thinking of is I'm thinking of Jesus coming into our world, fighting a battle. Uh, and, and you fought a battle for 19 months, didn't you? Fighting a battle against this cancer. And Jesus did that. He entered into the suffering and the pain and the victory. And he, he brought hope and he brought life to everyone. But what's fascinating is everybody that Jesus healed mm -hmm. died. We don't think about that, but they died with the assurance of the resurrection, and that's what we believe in. Amen? Amen. And now this life that, that will never end in Becca is now something that we can rejoice in, not that we're not sad and not that we don't miss her, but we have a victory and we have a hope and we have a faith that sustains us. Amen? Amen. We're going to come back and we want to pray with... Hmm. For some of your intentions, you've got some people in your life that, that, are, that are suffering. And I'm going to ask Paul to pray, and I'm going to be praying for you and for those that you love. Please, stay tuned.
I am delighted to tell you that I've written a book and I'd love for you to get it and read it and be blessed. I've, I've worked on this book for many years and I believe that if you read it, your relationship with God is going to grow very, very deep. It can be a blessing. It's called 15 Faces of God. What I've done is I've taken 15 of Jesus' parables and allowed those parables to be a door that opens to us through Jesus into who God the Father is. Oh, you're going to, you're going to be really shocked in many ways, but also blessed by the insight of God as a, as a searcher, as an optimist, as a lover. Please, for your gift of $20 or more, I would love to send you this powerful book. Remember, 15 Faces of God, I want you to be blessed. Well, I thank you very much for coming and sharing that story because I think you're going to be touching all these people that are writing in yes. and, 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 and reaching out to us, uh, asking for prayers, asking for the Lord to come into their lives and bring about a healing into, into what goes on. Um, please pray for Patty. She's from Wyoming, her health. She has all sorts of problems, um, you know. Uh, please pray for Patty. For Ingrid from Alabama, please help her daughter, uh, uh, Taria. Um, she needs to find a place and she needs to find peace. You know? From Louisiana, Joy, um, relationship with her mother. <laughs> and uh, let's just take this last one. This is from Pennsylvania. This is Marlon. Uh, my, um, my wife, Betty Jack, has Alzheimer's. You know? We have today and we have joy in today, and that's why God gave us a breath today, to spread joy to each other. And so that's the best prayer that we can do today, is, is understand the joy of today. Live today with fulfillment. Um, if you need help, then there are so many good people in this world. We always talk about the negative people. There are more wonderful people in this world mm. that reach out get, and get help from because it's there. And we just turned to our parish priest who was wonderful, Father Greg, and um, the support we got from our, our community, our friends, and our parish um, helped us through this. And that's where we spent our time. Amen. Thank you, Paul. And now, may Jesus' love for you always make you smile.